When you've heard someone talk about being one with the universe or being connected to everything, did you write it off as some kind of new age woo? Stick with me for a few minutes and let's see if we can make sense of this idea of interconnectedness because understanding this can help you see that you really are much more than you imagine. Take a look in the mirror. We're gonna reconsider what you think of as you, first drawing from some basic science. At the molecular level, on a daily basis, you are cycling out 7% of your body weight. Most of that is carbon dioxide and water, but over the course of a year, almost all the elements and minerals in your body have been replaced. When you look in the mirror, consider that 98% of you is not what was there last year. The elements that make up your body are continually cycling in and out with the environment around you, with the people and animals and plants and landscapes and seascapes across this entire earth. What you see in the mirror is an ever-changing temporary collection of atoms that came from a flower in Madagascar, a shopkeeper in India, an iguana in Mexico, and seaweed in Fiji. You are part of a greater system of life, continually interbecoming with everything else. And of course, Earth's elements were forged through the nuclear reactions and explosions of stars in our universe. You come from the stars. But we're just getting started. Your body isn't just you. Your body is a community. There are trillions of non-human organisms in your body, what we call the microbiome. In fact, human cells make up less than half of your body's total cell count. These foreign microscopic colonists are essential to your health. You couldn't live or do anything really without them. So what you're used to calling you is a lot more than just you. In light of these scientific facts, biologist Lewis Thomas explains that there are no solitary beings. The whole planet is one giant, living, breathing cell with all its vibrant components connected in symbiosis. In other words, the perception of yourself as separate and distinct from everything else is really an illusion. Looking in the mirror, is it still you? Maybe not just you? Keep looking and you can also see your parents and your grandparents and an extended lineage of human ancestors and even non-human ancestors. There are ancestors that were like chimpanzees, squirrels, lizards, fish, all the way back to the simplest single-celled organisms. You are not you without them. You are not independent of them. You are a continuation. Mindfulness teacher Thich Nhat Hanh used the term interbeing to describe this beautiful reality. He explained that everything relies on everything else in the cosmos in order to manifest, whether a star, a cloud, a flower, a tree, or you and me. You are not separate. You are not independent. You are in everything, and everything is in you. Like a wave on the ocean, we can point to you, but you are really a part of a much greater system. You are an expression of that system. Understanding all this is much more than an interesting philosophical exercise. It has important practical benefits. Understanding interconnectedness naturally facilitates compassion towards ourselves and others. We see our common humanity with other people and realize that our own well-being is inseparably connected to the well-being of those around us. Understanding interconnectedness, you would never deliberately harm another being. That would be like punching yourself in the face. Harming the environment, that would be like drinking poison. It wouldn't make any sense. Understanding interconnectedness also helps us not get stuck in the labels and roles and categories we often use to define ourselves. We can use them when they're helpful and let go of them when they aren't. The fact is, you are so much more than the labels that usually frame your identity. Let's come back to the mirror. 
yes, that's you. And your typical practical experience is that you do feel separate and distinct from everything else. Evolution has shaped our brains to see ourselves that way. And most of what we get from modern culture reinforces that story of separation. But it's worth asking, what are the consequences of living a story of separation? What if that's really a delusion, like Einstein wrote, and the reality is that the deep sense of connection and belonging you yearn for is already available to you? Let's finish with this from Alan Watts. So don't differentiate yourself and stand off against this and say, I am a living organism in a world made of a lot of dead junk, rocks and stuff. It all goes together. Those rocks are just as much you as your fingernails. Our common sense has been rigged, you see, so that we feel strangers and aliens in this world, and this is terribly plausible, simply because it's what we're used to. That's the only reason. And so then, you, as, as you question this basic assumption that underlies our culture, you find you get a new kind of common sense. It becomes absolutely obvious to you that uh, you are continuous with the universe. Well, in a few years, uh, it will be a matter of common sense to very many people that they are one with the universe. It will be so simple. And then maybe, if that happens, we shall be in a position to handle our technology with more sense, with love instead of with hate for our environment. Mindfulness practices, especially over time, help us see through the illusion of separateness. And that is both beautiful and liberating. So let's practice this.